Hi everybody, how is it going? This is Babylon 5, this is season 3 and this is episode number 3. This episode is called A Day in the Strife. So in the last episode we saw that Delenn and the Minbari, without a lot of the Grey Council being aware, have built this ship called the White Star, which is part Minbari technology, part Volon technology. And it looks so cool. And they've taken John Ivanova and Marcus to go see it and basically said to John, this is now yours. And we've got this other ship now that we can use in the fight against the shadows. And we saw the shadow vessel there and we were able to get away from it because we went through the old Markab system where the gate wasn't active anymore. And then we blew up the gate and the shadow ship. And it was just really cool. And I never even thought to myself, oh my God, you could use the gates, the transport gates, to blow up and blow enemies up. That never ever occurred to me. Amazing. I'm really looking forward to watching this, so I think I'm just going to get straight on into it, so let's go. We know why you're really doing this. He looks like a villain. They want to control all the weapons so they can push us around, intimidate. <laughs> weapons make you a big man, don't they, Sheridan? You're pretty brave sitting up there with armed guards on either side. I still here. John just looks like he doesn't want to take got. shit off anyone recently. It's what we got. Why don't you come down here and try this crap? That'll be enough. That's the real reason you don't want guns around here, because you're a damn coward. And without a gun to back you up, you got nothing. <laughs> John's got balls, though, hasn't he? What are you doing? You got the gun. <gasps> All I've got is... Pick up What I've got. I drop you and your guards will kill me. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe not. Hell, anything happens to me, everyone gets an instant promotion. <laughs> got the gun. Go ahead. Go for it. Oh, my God. Look. I was just talking. I didn't mean nothing. I wouldn't mess with John. John can be quite scary. That was great, A stupid. I mean, what if the guy would have gone for it? I mean, what if he would just would have blown your brains all over the place? I mean, what if he... What's that? Energy cap. I bombed it when I shoved the gun in his pocket. You are going to give me an ulcer. Okay, okay, next time I'll give him a live gun. You really do want that promotion, well, Next time you're gonna... Captain Sheridan, counsel in the farm. I've just Hi. arrived and wanted to check in with you. I'm here to replace Citizen Jakar. The Centauri believe he is using his influence to create an armed resistance back home. Don't you want the Centauri off your world? Mm. Or is he a sympathizer? My concern is for the welfare of all of my people. The resistance is causing great problems for the Centauri. We must cool things down. The time for action will come later. But the provisional now we must play government has authorized me to take charge of the local land population. How's the cap? He's fine, what? Well, I was telling Michael. Seems a lot more, I don't know, hard ass. Well, with everything that's going on, who wouldn't be? Frankly. Dr. Kobe Armand just called in sick. Says he can't take the next shift. Can you sit in for a while? Oh, God. What about Dr. Morales? She's in med three in heavy isolation. I can't leave until she's gone through decontamination. They need more medical right, staff here. Two hours. I'll be there. After speaking with Captain Sheridan, I was told to report to you. Prior to contacting Jakar directly, may I now proceed? Oh, that's crazy that he can't even speak to Jakar without you speaking know, to Londo first. I was thinking of visiting your world sometime soon. I couldn't really get a good look at it the last time I was in the area. Because Do those mass drivers, be Londo. For someone such as myself to visit your world now? Yes. The streets are kept clear of troublemakers, rock throwers, protesters. There is that the resistance. Surviving streets are quite empty, Ambassador. I feel bad this guy's got this job. And the executions, Nafar, the executions continue. The executions continue. Was that necessary? Oh. They got out of their place once. We must make sure it doesn't happen again. Londo, we've beaten them. 
Their cities are in ashes. Their military is wiped out. They've lost hundreds of thousands of lives. They have nothing left. Mm -hmm. There you are wrong. They still have their pride. So is that what it's about? Pride? Yeah. It's not enough that we've beaten them. We have to break them? Yes. I'm sorry. I thought you understood that. Alien vessel coming to relative stop, Captain. No life signs present. Weapons? Fine sign. None that I can tell. Must be a science probe of some kind. Maybe. I'm getting a signal. A recording. Anything you recognize? Negative. Just the same pattern of signals repeated over and over. Probably sending us their alphabet and language codes. How long before the system decodes it? It's pretty complex, sir. Oh. At least two, three hours. The Centauri diplomatic mission to your homeworld has been closed for, what, several years now? Some trouble, I understand, with our last envoy. Ooh. I think that Veer would be the perfect replacement. He is friendly. He's polite. He, he keeps to himself. He wouldn't even spy on your government. <laughs> that is true. You consider it rude. Stop dancing, Michael. You got something to say, say it. This is a glass of water. Mm -hmm. The reason it's a glass of water and not wine is because once I start, I don't know where to stop. The last thing you want to do is hand an obsessive compulsive a mm -hmm. drink or an dice addiction or stimulus. You're crazy, Michael. I don't have a problem. Look back at Earhart's between the time you went off to the bathroom and you came back. Did you do any stims? Stims are perfectly legal, used by prescription in moderation. But how That's often is he using you. them? Did you do any stims? Because we've seen a few episodes where he's used right. them. Yeah, what of it? Look, I don't want to butt into your personal life. It's a little late for that now, isn't it? But I've checked your logs. You pull shifts you don't have to. You've been checking up on me, huh? Thought you were my friend. Damn it, Stephen, I am your friend. That's why he's doing well, this. We wouldn't be having this conversation if I weren't. I don't have a problem, okay? But if it makes you happy, I'll cut back on the stems. Because it's not a big deal. It's good to see you again. And you. I wondered what happened to you. Last I heard after we broke out of that striped ship and got back, you'd been sent off to some hospital on Narn. Needed time to heal. Oh. I meant to return to thank you for saving my life. Uh, then the war came. It was terrible. I tried to serve to help any way I could. And That's how you wound up with Nafar? Bodyguard. Sometimes I do not know who I'm protecting him against. Outsiders or my own people. Yeah. But because of him, I'm What a difficult here. job that guy has. And now I can thank you. I owe you a debt. A debt I must repay as a matter of honor. I'm not entirely sure what my superiors back home would think if I suddenly began showing up places with a Narn bodyguard. They would say, here is a man who will live to be 150. The probe was sent to find other life forms and initiate contact. So far, so good. What about the rest of the message? It's a series of questions. Physics, quantum mechanics, Why? molecular biology, genetics. Apparently, it's some form of intelligence test to determine if we're sufficiently intelligent for contact. Well, gee, I'm honored. <laughs> so what do we get if we pass? Cures for every known form of disease. It's just one thing. It says that if we don't provide all the correct answers within 24 hours, the probe will self-destruct with the force of 500,000 megatons. You don't appreciate the damage you're causing our people back home by leading this resistance! <sighs> damage I'm causing? I didn't invade Narn! No, he didn't. I didn't bomb our world with asteroids! Level our cities! I didn't... All right! What would you have me do otherwise? Postpone the fight? Just for a little while, and come back with me. To you Narn. can't... You can't go back! Surrender to the Centauri. From time to time, you come back here, report to me, we will, uh, do a little business together. And who will take care of things when I'm gone? I'm quite capable of taking care of myself, Veer. Oh. I want you away from here. You have been promoted. You will earn more money, receive more attention. Women may even come to find you attractive. In time. How much time? Three minutes. Standing by to transmit. Commander, the message we got from the probe, what did it promise if we did give all the right answers? Advanced tech you to medical advent? information, cures for disease, new jump gate technology. But it never gave you the name of the race or where it's from. I assume we get that information once we pass this test. Two minutes. Okay, here we go. Now wait. There's something about this that has been bothering me ever since we made contact. We have been operating under the assumption that whoever sent the probe is deciding whether or not a sentient race is fit to survive based on what they know at the moment of contact. Mm-hmm. But if that's true, why give them a leg up on more advanced technologies? 
Maybe yes. they were feeling generous. No, if they were feeling generous, they wouldn't be wiping out inferior races based on lack of advancement. Maybe they're the inferior no, I don't like it. Captain, we're down to one minute. I don't see any other options here. What if it's a berserker? A probe sent out to find life forms advanced enough to pose a threat to the race that created it. It sends a list of questions backed by a threat. If it gets the right answers back, that proves a certain level of technological advancement. Then boom! You wipe out a potential enemy without leaving any trace of where you came from. Or it could be exactly what it said. Fifteen seconds. Captain, send or no send? No send. Oh, boy. We cannot let you leave, Jakar. You are valued and you are needed here. This is foolishness. Oh, there's just going to be more. We cannot let you go, Jakar. Stay, Jakar, for us. To leave now that I have decided to stay and join the others would be rude. This was such an interesting episode to see how these non representatives have now been sent to Babylon 5 by the Centauri and to say that we are now taking over Jakar because Jakar is so entrenched in this resistance that it's having a bad effect on the Nan homeworld and people's families are dying because ships are being shot down by the resistance. Those that are in the resistance on Babylon 5, their families then are going to be targeted because they have the allegiance to Jakar. And Jakar basically saying, look, I will go home for you. And knowing that he was probably walking back to his death by going home was interesting to see because he just seemed to accept it because that was for him the right thing to do to save the people the family of the people that were supporting him on Babylon 5 and the guy who John saved on the Stribe ship it was really nice to see that he was here and he came back to say thank you and how he owed John a debt and then to see him basically help persuade Jakar to stay in the end I thought was really sweet and I hope we see this guy a bit more because he's such an interesting character and I really like his friendship and relationship with John it's so different I do like how John has these relationships with the Nan especially with Jakar I think there's a, such a nice little thing to see develop and seeing Londo go to Delenn and basically saying we need to or I want to get Via on Mimba and use him as like an envoy um, because we saw at the start where Via wasn't as down with Londo as probably Londo thought he would be in terms of internment camps and work camps and how the Nana being treated whereas Londo still asking questions like, are the deaths being carried out still? And Via's just stood there like, what on earth? I'm, I love Via. He's so sweet and he's so kind. And you can just see that this is not something that he wants to be a part with. And seeing him at the end there, looking at Londo as if to say, look, do I really have to go? And Londo's just like, yes. But I can understand Londo doing what he's done. Like, in a way, he is protecting Via. But at the same time, like, he's probably thinking to himself, if I don't send him away, he'll probably end up being killed himself, possibly because he's got different viewpoint and he's not as, you know, entrenched in the treatment of the Nan as most Centauri probably are. I'm really looking forward to watching the next one, so I'm going to get straight on into that and I will see you guys later. So thank you. <laughs>